This animation demonstrates the timed lead placement in preparation for either an advanced trial or a full implant of the axonic system. The patient is marked preoperatively in the upright position, either standing or sitting. The stimulator should be placed below the iliac crest in the hollow of the ilium. Palpating the iliac crest and then measuring four centimeters caudal will give an ideal location. The stimulator stencil can be used as part of this process to mark the location. A two and a half centimeter line is marked lateral to the stimulator site to indicate the incision location. The patient should be marked bilaterally. The patient is positioned so that they are lying prone with elevation provided under the hips to allow for a flattening of the sacrum. There should not be any rotation or tilting of the sacral area to optimize for ideal imaging and ease of needle placement. Support is placed underneath the feet to allow the toes to be free to demonstrate motor response. The ground pad is placed on the patient's leg. The cable is then connected to the axonics clinician programmer. Once the patient has been prepped and draped, AP fluoroscopy is used to identify the level of the third sacral foramina, S3. The ideal location for lead placement is in the uppermost medial portion of S3. The directional guide is placed at the inferior aspect of the sacroiliac joint. This landmark identifies the level of S3. The medial border of the foramen is marked bilaterally and used as a landmark to ensure placement of the foramen needle along the most medial aspect. The foramen needles are placed on the skin to assist with marking the medial borders of the sacral foramen. The needle entry point should be determined so that the needle will enter the S3 foramen parallel to an approximately one centimeter cephalad of the fusion plate. Slight adjustments in the angle of the foramen needle may be required to access the foramen. While adjusting the needle angle, the needle should be kept parallel to the midline. A needle entry point that is too cephalad on the skin results in a needle angle going toward S4, which could result in an S4 motor response. Conversely, an entry point that is too caudad will result in the needle angle going toward S2 and could cause an S2 motor response. Once the foramen is accessed, gentle movement is used to advance the foramen needle such that the tip of the needle is located just at the anterior surface of the sacrum. The needle test stimulation cable is clipped to the uninsulated portion of the foramen needle, and the other end of the cable is connected to the clinician programmer. The clinician programmer is used to provide stimulation to test for patients' motor responses. The ideal motor response is a pulling in of the pelvic floor muscles, also referred to as a bellows response, at an amplitude below 2 milliamps, with toe flexion occurring at higher amplitudes. Once ideal response is achieved, the stylet is removed from the needle, and the directional guide is advanced to the indicated mark, depending on the length of needle being used. The foramen needle is removed over the directional guide. A small half centimeter incision is made at the insertion point to accommodate the lead introducer. Under live fluoroscopy, the introducer is carefully placed over the directional guide and inserted until the indicator is just halfway through the sacral plate. The dilator and directional guide are removed from the introducer's sheath. This tined lead is packaged with straight and curved stylets. The curved stylet has an angled tip which allows for better tracking of the lead along the sacral nerve root. The lead is introduced such that the angle of the curve will be directed in a caudal and medial to lateral fashion so as to follow the path of the nerve. The first white mark on the lead indicates that the most distal electrode is at the tip of the introducer sheath. The lead should be advanced until the most proximal electrode, electrode 3, is straddling the anterior aspect of the sacrum, taking care not to advance the lead beyond the second white marker. To readjust the angle, the lead is retracted back into the sheath to the first white marker, such that the electrodes are housed within the sheath. 
the lead is gently twisted to a slight degree, allowing for a slight change in the angle to obtain the ideal trajectory. The tined lead should be positioned with a slight curvature from cephalad to caudad following the path of the nerve. The tined lead stimulation cable is clipped to the proximal end of the lead and connected to the clinician programmer. This feature of the axonic system eliminates the need for the physician to adjust the location of the test stimulation cable. The clinician programmer is used to check lead impedances before stimulation delivery. Each electrode is individually tested. The goal is to obtain the desired motor response, bellows, followed by big toe flexion on all four electrodes at thresholds of two milliamps or less. Under live fluoroscopy, the introducer is removed over the tined lead, maintaining lead position and deploying the tines. The tines of the lead are arranged in a helical pattern, which results in smooth feeling deployment when removing the sheath over them. The stylet is removed along with the introducer sheath. In the AP view, the lead is shown hugging the medial border of the foramen with a slight medial to lateral trajectory. And in the lateral view, the lead should be positioned with a slight downward trajectory, and this indicates that the lead is following along the natural path of the nerve. Finally, each electrode is tested again. The goal is to define and record the motor response on all four electrodes at the lowest amplitude. This information will be saved to the stimulator and used to create a patient-specific programming algorithm. This concludes the placement of the tined lead, which is now ready for the advanced trial or stimulator procedure.